Welcome into Five Wide Fantasy. Today's video must start and sit wide receivers. We go through each and every matchup for the last week, the championship week of the fantasy football season, helping you set your lineups for what is hopefully a week where we'll make you some money. Um, and speaking of money, if you have not signed up and joined with our partners over at Bedford, definitely go do that. That link is down below in the description. Fantasy season's coming to an end, but you can stay invested in these games with some bets. I'll have the Bedford boost for you guys in a moment, but just going through the offer they have for you. Brand new offer. If you sign up, bet $50, you're going to get $111 in free bets. And then as well, for the first five weeks you're signed up, you're going to get up to $1,000 in bet insurance. So for the first week, for example, if you bet uh, $400, or well, if you, you bet any amount, any, any of those bets that lose, you're going to get half of the loss back in free bets. So go take advantage of the offer from Betfred. They're taking care of everyone to get their start their account started. And if you're in Ohio, they're going to be live in Ohio. They're the official sportsbook partner of the Bengals, too. They sent us to the Bengals game a few weeks ago. Um, live in Ohio on January 1st. If you pre-register, that link will be down below. You're also going to receive an extra $40 in free bets if you pre-register and make a deposit before January 1st. So go do that. Love our partners over at Betfred. We're going to be covering tons of sports betting stuff for the next five, six weeks as we wrap up the season. But let's get to these matchups starting tonight or starting with Saints, Eagles, um, you know, it's, this video is coming out on Friday, so we're not covering the Thursday night matchup. But Saints-Eagles, a very interesting one um, from the injury department for both of these teams. Of course, the Eagles banged up. Lane Johnson actually is going to play through his injury. Um, we don't know the status of Jalen Hurts right now at the moment. Um, so obviously that's impactful. But what we did see the last this last week from the Eagles offense with Gardner Minshew is that the pass game, it didn't take a significant step back. You know, the ground game kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, Miles Sanders with the fumble in a match against the Saints. The Saints are top 10 in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. Uh, but I don't think that should deter you from playing any of these guys. Um, this is a matchup here for the Eagles that I still think they could take advantage of. The Saints don't generate a lot of pressure rushing the passer. Um, so I do think the Eagles will have some success. And Miles Sanders didn't practice early uh, as of Wednesday. So a bit of a red flag there. Um, you could see these pass catchers leaned on. I don't think they're bad starts uh, by any means, uh, especially A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown still looks very good with Gardner Minshew at QB. On the other side though, we have Chris Olave, who's really the only guy to consider Like, if you're with this late in the season where Raheem Shahid is not someone you're probably looking at. Um, but Olave did practice in a limited fashion. Hard to, to, to rely on him just with how inconsistent Andy Dalton has been over the last five, six weeks here now. You know, we know Alave is that number one option. He can give us a decent floor. I'm just not sure how healthy he is or if he's going to play. If he does play, I know the Eagles got torched last week, but I do think, you know, this is the number one defense in DVOA, um, in past DVOA. So I would still lean against playing them um, just with, you know, how, how, good of a, uh, of a defense this has been all season long, I think that uh, they could definitely revert back to what they've been all season as opposed to playing more like last week. Bears, Lions. This puppy has a high total, 52 points over at Betfred. Um, obviously, the last time these two teams matched up, they gave us a ton of points. The Bears, let's start with. Uh, I don't think there's anyone to really consider playing the wide receiver spot. You know, Darnell Mooney over the season, Chase Claypool dealing with a knee injury. You got Vilas Jones, EQ, um, who else am I forgetting? Byron Pringle. Uh, Byron Pringle is actually probably the top option. Uh, Cole Komet is really the only guy I'm looking to play in this matchup. Um, but, uh, you know, like Justin Fields here to bounce back after a terrible week. On the Lions side of things, you know, DJ Chark has been really solid um, and really good the last little bit here. I think he's a reliable start and a good start here. I expect there to be a lot of points in this game, and Chark will probably play a factor in that. We saw Jamison Williams. I think it was he liked a tweet, maybe, that talked about getting him the ball more. I would love to see Jameson Williams more involved. He's definitely, you know, the second, maybe even the most talented guy on this team. Like, if you think about Amonor St. Brown, came into the league, you know, ran his 40 time was terrible. He, people didn't think he was much of an athlete. He's proven people wrong. Jameson Williams is just a natural athlete and looks like he still has that breakaway speed that he had at Alabama and Ohio State in his college career, even off the ACL injury. He's not someone you're looking to play this late in the season, but um, I do like him on our St. Brown. I do like DJ Chark. I think there could be some points in this game for sure. So uh, definitely look to play those guys. Panthers, Buccaneers. Bucks at home here, three-point favorites. Totals are like 40. Uh, this game is going to fucking stink because the Buccaneers laugh out loud, terrible football team. There's still probably some guy you know out there that's like, hey man, 
The Bucs get to the playoffs. They're frisky. They're not. They're not in any way frisky. This offense stinks. The protection stinks. They got a great defense. So that makes playing any Panthers players very tough in my mind. DJ Moore, you know, coming off a pretty good week last week with uh, with Sam Darnold. He was a great stack for us in our owner's box lineups. Helped me get into the pay zone last week as well. But here's the thing. I'm not sure that I want to rely on um, him in a matchup against the Bucks defense. That is really good. Top 10 in DVOA. You know, they are 20th in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, but I expect this game to just be absolutely terrible. Very low scoring. I think I could play the under in this game with how often the Panthers want to run the ball too. Um, and then the Bucks offense just being completely inept. Um, so, you know, the Chris Godwin, we're going to see with plenty of volume. Mike Evans, probably not someone I re- want to rely on. He's probably, he's honestly, he's the reason I was eliminated in one of my leagues is because I got a terrible week from him and a terrible week from DeAndre Hopkins. So um, Chris Godwin and his volume gives us enough of an elevated floor to play him. But really in this matchup, I'm at the point with the Bucks that there's just no reason to expect things are going to change. It's week 17, guys. This team is what it is. It's not very good. Broncos, Chiefs. Speaking of teams that aren't very good, the Denver Broncos. Um, Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, both banged up. Uh, limited in practice this week. Going against the Chiefs defense that is 26th in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. I do think, you know, that Jerry Judy is still a solid play this week. Um, I think he'll, he'll be available and he'll be healthy. The, the situation here is obviously the Broncos find themselves a team that just can't really score any points, but they consistently find themselves down in games. They're 12 and a half point underdogs in this one. Judy has proven to be a decent floor option for you week in and week out. Not a lot of upside, uh, but I think he's still someone that you can get, you can expect to give you right around the double digit mark uh, in fantasy points. So uh, Cortland Sutton, on the other hand, I'm just, yeah, we're completely, I'm completely out on him as, uh, as this season goes on. On the Chiefs side, it looks like McCole Hardman is going to be welcomed back here uh, for Kansas City. I don't really think a lot of these guys are are great options. Uh, you know, Travis Kelsey being that number one pass catching option for the Chiefs. If they welcome McCole Hardman back, I would expect it to be, to be because he is at 100%. He was really impactful for their offense before leaving with the injury. So I think he could you know, muddy the waters between Juju, between Marcus Valdez-Scantling, Justin Watson, you name it, all these options in this pa- in this passing offense. Um, in a matchup with their significant favorites, I'd expect Jarek McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco to be the beneficiaries, less likely so with the receivers, especially against the number one fantasy defense to wide receivers on the season and number one passing defense in the NFL. Colts, Giants. Let's get to the Bedford boost before we get to this game because I actually have a play for this game that is in the Bedford boost. Again, if you go sign up at Bedford in the boosted section, the five wide boost will be there this week's. We're going with the Colts plus six on the road in New York. You know what? You're probably thinking that's incredibly gross. Why do I have to rely on Nick Foles again? I can't do that. Six points is a lot for this Giants team. His total is at 38. Both of these teams will lean on the run heavily, heavily in this game. After the performance from Nick Foles, who's back at QB again this week, I would expect Zach Moss and Saquon Barkley to be involved plenty in this game. And both of these teams play at a very, very, very slow pace. There's not going to be a lot of possessions. There's not going to be a lot of explosive big plays in my mind. I like the plus six here. I think this is too many points for the Giants. You do not see them covering this type of number very often. Uh, A lot of their wins this season have been tight. They're not pulling away really against anyone. And I know, you know, how down of a season this has season has been for the Colts, but I do think they are a very good defense or still a really good defense. And the reason that this Colts team has been in any game this season. The play we're going to parlay it with, though, that I really like, the prop, the full board of props isn't out yet. Brian Robinson, though, to score a touchdown, plus 100. Antonio Gibson has been dealing with an ankle and knee injury, and his touches have been very limited lately. I don't expect that to change. And over the since Brian Robinson returned in week five, he's more than doubled Gibson in inside the five carries. I expect that to continue in this matchup against a Cleveland team that is terrible against the run. I think Brian Robinson will be leaned on heavily. I think there will be scoring opportunities for this offense in the red zone, and Brian Robinson is the guy you want. So I'm going to parlay Brian Robinson to score a touchdown with the Colts plus six this weekend over at Betfred. So get go get in on the boost, um, and let's, let's hit this play. Colts-Giants, though. Let's get to the fantasy side of things. Um, I mentioned how I expect this game to go. 
<laughs> Michael Pittman, he, he was my, he was one of my must sit guys last week. Kind of played out just like that. Um, I think he's a tough play here. Obviously, the Colts are six point underdogs, so they could be in that trailing game script, like they were. You know, they were in that trailing game script though against the Chargers. The Chargers are probably a much better pass defense than the Giants are, uh, but I think it still makes Pittman a tough play. He's definitely the only guy I would consider in this matchup for Indianapolis. But there are guys I like better. Like I, I would rather play, um, probably rather play DJ Chark. I'd probably rather play any of the Eagles wide receivers. Um, I'll mention a few other guys just to kind of give you perspective on who, who I like better. Um, I'd probably play Judy as well now that I think about it um, in that matchup. On the other side of things, for the Giants passing offense, I don't expect them to lean on the pass too, too much in this game. Um, I think that makes, you know, last week I loved the Giants wide receivers, the Giants pass catchers, um, and, and Slayton was great. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins was great. Richie James was even serviceable for you. Uh, but here... I think we're. I expect this team to lean more on the run, and the Colts are top five defense in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So um, in this matchup, not a lot I love from the pass catching side of things. Texans, Jaguars. The Jags have said Doug Peterson has said he's not looking to sit any of these guys this week. I don't think it's a bad call because this team is riding a ton of momentum um, and good to kind of um, can keep that going as they get into next week's matchup that will decide their fate in the playoffs. But um, the Texans. Fourth in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. It's because they have a terrible run defense and everyone's running it on them. But I don't think that playing um, either of Zay Jones or Christian Kirk is a bad play. The Texans are, have a terrible coverage grade. They're not a good coverage unit. They're 18th in pass DVOA uh, on the season. I think that Christian Kirk and Zay Jones are good options because the, the Texans have proven to play the Jags tough week in and week out. Um, Sorry, not week in and week out. Season after season, it's been a number of years now that these teams, obviously the Jags weren't good, any good until this year. But um, I think this game could be tight like it was earlier in the season. And that could um, see us looking more towards Christian Kirk and Zay Jones uh, in this matchup against the Texans, who have been frisky, very frisky the last number of weeks. So uh, that could continue here too. Cardinals, Falcons. Man, what do we do here? Colt McCoy um, is going to be starting at QB for the Cardinals. Um, so that does help um, DeAndre Hopkins coming off a really bad week. Um, the connection with McSorley, just he was getting plenty of looks, but just not a lot of um, you know converted catches. I think you can go if if you're still managed to be in the fantasy playoffs with DeAndre Hopkins. Great job by you. Credit to you. I am eliminating the league that I have him, uh, but I think. DeAndre Hopkins can have success in this game. Marquise Brown can have success in this game um, against the Falcons defense that's just completely red here on our screen. 30th in DVOA, 27th in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So I do think the Cardinals pass catchers are in a plus matchup here uh, and, and underdogs at uh, Atlanta too. So that's something to keep an eye on when you're looking at that game script as well to, to look uh, and lean more on the pass game as well. Falcons side of things, Drake London has been very good the last two weeks with Desmond Ritter. He's getting targeted at an incredibly high rate, and he is he's putting on some terrific set of skills, like the, the his ability in contested catch situations, that basketball background that he has, being able to go up and get just about anything. Great hands, tremendous catch radius. I think he'll continue again this week um, against the Cardinals, but I will say that I do think the Falcons are going to run the ball quite a bit, but it looks like Drake London's, you know, being nearly over-targeted here. Um, so I would expect him to still give you a solid week and a good floor in this matchup. He's been very good to you the last two weeks. So definitely helping you out throughout the fantasy playoffs here too. Browns, Commanders. So I mentioned this in our must our players and owners box this week. Look, with Curtis Samuel and Carson Wentz now at QB, it makes Samuel like a must start guy in my mind. He, has, uh, he averaged over nine targets a game with... Um, with Carson Wentz at QB. In terms of betting as well and props, I'll be looking to see what this number is with Samuel and probably play it more than likely on his receptions because Wentz is someone who lives a little bit more in those intermediate and short areas. They just get the ball into Samuel's hands and let him work after the catch. So I'll be definitely targeting that from a betting perspective, but as well, um, love him from a fantasy perspective. And I do think it downgrades Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. As good as Dotson has been recently, you can't really look past how good he's been I wouldn't expect the coaches to but it just it's less about the scheme and it's more about where um, Wentz is looking to in his progressions and what he likes to do as a passer so I think Samuel is a play this week for sure even against the Browns who are um, a very 
poor run defense, and the commanders will probably run the ball quite a bit. On the other side with the Browns, though, this is a tough matchup for their for their run game. But the commanders have, have inc- improved significantly all across the board defensively, especially against the pass um, in the last half of the season. But I do think the Browns will lean on the pass a little bit more. Nick Chubb's a little banged up as well. So I do like both Donovan Peoples-Jones and um, Amari Cooper in this matchup against Washington. Definitely a good play for you, I think. Dolphins-Patriots. Teddy Bridgewater in the QB. Look, looking like I would be shocked to see Teddy Bridgewater. I mean... We're seeing all the takes online and on on your TV of Tua should be out for the rest of the season. Probably true. His you know his career is kind of would be up in the air if anything else were to happen over the the, the home stretch of the season. Now it's Tua, um, and he has a bit of a crazy love for the game of football that kind of goes beyond looking for looking out for his health. So maybe he is back before the end of the season. But um, Teddy Bridgewater this week against the Patriots defense. Look, even with the change of QB, you've got to play Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill. They're dynamic. They're just, they'll do everything they can to get the ball in their hands. They're two of the best players on, their best players on offense. So I would expect those guys, even against the Patriots pass defense, that's a top three unit in pass DVOA. um, I expect those guys to be mainstays in your lineup Um, anyways. I expect, I would expect Jalen Waddell help to get to this point uh, and into your championship too. On the Patriots side, love Jacoby Myers in this matchup. The Dolphins are a top 10 fantasy defense in wide, uh, fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, but they're 25th in pass DVOA. They have a really poor coverage grade, and um, they're, they've got a great run front, and I expect the Patriots to have to lean on Mac Jones' arm in this matchup. Um, the short favorites, three-point favorites. I like Jacoby Myers. Gave you a great week last week. He's the number one receiving option in this offense, and I think he benefits in a matchup where I think the Patriots will need to lean more on the pass against this Dolphins front. Uh, that is for sure. Jets. Seahawks, Mike White back at QB. This offense is going to be better. Garrett Wilson, if you have him, you need to start him. I know the Seahawks are technically top three in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, but it's because they've been so bad against the run. The teams, much like the Texans, aren't putting it through the air, putting it in the air much against them. I expect the Jets, who've struggled to run the ball quite a bit lately, um, will be able to move the ball through the air. And with Mike White at QB, they've been throwing the ball 40-plus times a game. So I think that'll still happen here. And the Seahawks are taking some steps back in terms of their ability to rush the passer, which is important in this game against the Jets, and also in coverage. I think the Jets are going to be a play I'll probably make. They're two-point favorites on the road, which is a bit eye-opening to see them as favorites um, at Seattle. But I think this is a good matchup for them uh, offensively, and getting Mike White back will definitely help. And we're seeing the 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 Seahawks offense really struggle lately, so that'll probably be a play I'm on as well, just for 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 more of a betting look. But we get into betting on the Twitch channel um, on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. too, and every day on our on our Twitch at 12:30. We're live talking sports betting too. So if you guys haven't checked us out there, definitely go do that. Uh, On the Seahawks side, though, Gary Wilson's the only guy I'm looking to play from the passing side on the Jets. On the Seahawks side. DK Metcalf, still a start for me, even against this Jets pass defense. Second in fantasy points allowed, sixth in pass DVOA. We saw last week Marquise Goodwin got hurt um, and obviously missing Tyler Lockett, who I don't expect to return this week either. Uh, Metcalf is that number one guy, not just that number one guy, he's pretty much the only guy in this offense. And the Seahawks will definitely lean on Ken Walker, I think, a fair bit. But if, you know, we're, we're still going to see some passing volume from this team, even in a tough matchup. So I do still want to be playing DK Metcalf in, in this one, too. 49ers, Raiders make the change to Jared Stidham. What the hell do we do now with Devontae Adams? I could see him being a reliable crutch, but Hunter Renfro is back. Darren Waller is back. That makes things difficult. And the Raiders are 10 point underdogs, so they could see a fair bit of. Um, a passing volume, especially considering how good the 49ers are against the run. But man, if you're putting Jared Stinneman at QB, I would expect this team to lean on Josh Jacobs, who's been their best player this season. Really tough. I don't think Dev- I don't think you're playing for a fantasy championship if Devontae Adams is on your team. Maybe you are. Maybe uh, I don't know how it happened, but that's it's incredible if it did. I don't think I can play him. The, the, the 49ers are a very good pass defense. I know they're 25th in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. It's because of the game script they constantly put themselves in. But Devontae Adams, without Derek Carr, I know who, who's already been so inconsistent, I think there are better options available to you, unfortunately. Um, it might be tough for you to do that. You might not even listen to me on this. But man, it's just, 
This offense has been so terrible. The 49ers will undoubtedly dominate time of possession in this game, dominate the Raiders um, offensively. It's just... Yeah, it's just very, it's very tough in my mind to be able to play any of these play um, play them, especially because Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller do provide good competition for targets. They're very good players. Rams, Chargers, the Rams, nothing to really speak of on the pass catching side. On the Chargers side, I think they'll struggle to run the ball against the Rams, who have a very good run front. So Mike Williams um, and Keenan Allen are definitely guys I want to start. Josh Palmer is that third option. I'm not looking to play. Um, he's definitely taken a pretty significant backseat since these guys have returned, and Allen has been a major, major target for Justin Herbert um, as the slot option for this team. So that is definitely two guys you want to start against this Rams pass defense, who are pretty mediocre unit on the season. All right, Vikings Packers. Game here where I do exp I do see, you know, the script being very easy to predict. The Vikings should be able to run the ball really well. The Packers should should have to lean on the pass. Christian Watson's status up in the air. I'm going to go with him not playing, especially after missing the entire second half in what was a must-win game for the Packers last week. He's not practicing so far this week either. So I will go with the assumption that it'll be Romeo Dubs, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb. I think Romeo Dubs and Alan Lazard are good starts for you this week because the Vikings have a very good run defense, but they're 30th in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers and 24th in pass DVOA. It's a good matchup for Aaron Rodgers to move the ball through the air. I think this, this game could have plenty of points too. On the Vikings side, the only player I'm looking to start is um, Justin Jefferson, obviously. Because the Packers are a very good pass defense. Eighth in fantasy points, eighth in pass DVOA, a 77.8 coverage grade. This is a really good unit against the pass and not a good unit against the run. So Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, I expect to have good weeks. Uh, Cook to have a big week, but these other options between KJ Osborne and um, Adam Thielen, not looking, at, look, not looking to play. It's really just DJ Hawkinson, of course, at the tight end spot is who I'm looking to start. Steelers Ravens, Sunday Night Football. Flex into this spot. I don't think Lamar Jackson's going to be back. He's not practicing for yet another week. You know, the, the Ravens are a playoff team. I think for the Ravens, like, you should, you of course want to secure this top seed, uh, top wild card seed, but because it is a very enticing matchup to play the Titans or Jaguars instead of the Bengals or Bills or, or Chiefs, but I don't think it's worth it enough to force Lamar Jackson into a game that he that isn't necessarily needed. They are favorites in this game at home. But with Tyler Huntley, there's no reason to like lean on a Demarcus Robinson as much as he is that number one number one guy for this offense. If Lamar Jackson was healthy, I'd be loving Demarcus Robinson. But I think it's too risky, too inconsistent to lean on those guys. But on the other side with the Steelers, the Steelers are going to have an impossible time running the ball. And the Ravens, 21st in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. I love George Pickens. I love Deontay Johnson. I'll be looking to play their props as well. But I think Kenny Pickett will be the focal point for the Steelers' offense because the Ravens are allowing like 60 rushing yards a game to running backs this season. So go to those two guys. This should be an offense that will have to lean on Kenny Pickett's arm quite a bit here. Bills Bengals, game of the weekend, Monday night, which is not even on the weekend, game, game of the week, Monday night. Bengals at home as short underdogs. I think any offensive weapons in this game, you got to play. Um, I think this game will have plenty of points. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase definitely starts. Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs definitely starts. When you look at the perspective of the Bills, this is a very competitive game for both of these teams. So I think both of these quarterbacks will be leaned on here. Um, and both of these teams haven't been all that good in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, both in the bottom half of the league too. So looking to play those guys. Gabe Davis gave us a good week after I really liked him. Um, and he, I think he can still do that again here uh, against this Bengals team, which should be a really competitive and fun game to watch. So look to start all of your pass catchers um, in that one. So love those ones. All right, that's every single matchup for the final week of the fantasy season. Guys, thank you so much for being with us this season. Hopefully we can get you to that championship. Join us in the Discord as well for this weekend with any last minute updates, any weather that changes and impacts these games. We're live at 11 a.m. on Sundays and we're live every day at 1230 on the Underspox Twitch channel as well. So come join 
join us there at 11 a.m. We'll preview these games, but we'll be here for the rest of the NFL season. I'll be dropping three, at least three videos a week, whether it's on betting, whether it's on DFS, whether it's on anything going on in the NFL. So make sure you stick around for the rest of the season. We'll be covering everything leading up to the Super Bowl. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, like the video as well, and comment down below with any start decisions you're looking to make. Happy to help. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.